I'm Dr. Jen. Um, I wanted to spend some time today to talk about NAD. We get a lot of questions here at the clinic at Med Club um, about NAD. There's a lot of information floating online about it. And I just wanted to spend a few minutes to talk about what NAD actually does, what it helps with, um, and the ways of getting it. So first off, NAD stands for nicotinamide adenine uh, dinucleotide. It's a mouthful. That's why most people just call it NAD. Um, NAD is in every last cell in our body. We need NAD. It helps us in many different ways. What DNA does on a cellular level is it helps to repair, regenerate, and it also helps with energy production within the cell. Um, before we really get into NAD, we kind of have to talk a little about a bit the aging process so you know how this fits in down the road. So with aging, there are many, many different factors with aging. So anything that says it's a magic bullet that fixes it all is just not true because there's, it's too complicated and there's too many factors involved. But the more science is going into uh, basically anti-aging medicine, the more research is being done at a cellular level what's actually happening that causes some of the symptoms of increased age. Um, so with aging, the more damage that happens, uh, whether it's environmental or disease process that happens in our cell, the more NAD is being used. The older we get, NAD, when it's finished and we've used it, our body has a recycle process to create more NAD. There's a specific enzyme involved with that, but as we age, that enzyme becomes less and less in our system, which means we get less and less NAD back to help our system to fully repair, regenerate, and create more cellular energy. So basically as we age, we also have a decrease of cellular energy. Energy is made in the mitochondria in the cell and it, the type of energy is called ATP. Um, when ATP, the energy becomes lower, how we see this as human beings is basically brain fogginess, chronic fatigue, memory issues, all of these have to do with the energy depletion. Um, most people, when they think about energy, they think of amphetamine type hyper energy. That is not what NAD does. It replaces it on the cellular level, which means it helps us perceive things as basically being more energetic. It gives us mind clarity. It brings kind of the fog off that happens with age. Um, the cool thing with NAD is it doesn't always have to be age related. Any kind of disease process or certain events in our life like menopause can actually deplete NAD quicker as well, which is a lot of times if you or someone you know has suffered for any kind of degenerative disease, like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, rheumatoid arthritis, you've noticed maybe that they've aged a little faster than someone who's healthy in their same age bracket. That's because one of the reasons is because the more those stresses are in their body, the more NAD their body needs and is using. And so it's depleting a little faster than average which means people who are menopausal, who maybe have some mood swings going on, or um, they have some mental fogginess going on, that actually can be improved by supplementing with NAD. Same thing with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, any kind of autoimmune issues. This also helps on that front. Um, the other thing we've noticed is people with certain chronic issues that we might not know exactly why certain things happen, it seems to help with. Good example is we have several patients on it who has hypothyroidism, which is low thyroid hormone. Um, this medication has helped to stabilize their numbers in ways that we don't really understand uh, research-based yet, but I do know what the labs have shown and it has shown a great uh, stabilization within their numbers. Um, other things that NAD helps with a lot, um, and this is another one we don't fully understand. We have guesses about why it helps, but we don't fully understand it. It withdrawal symptoms. Um, whether you are getting off a of medication you've been on for many years, like Ambien for sleeping, or if you are getting off recreational drugs and you're going through acute withdrawals, this has helped with some of the symptoms. Don't mistake, it doesn't get rid of withdrawals. It doesn't make you bypass that whole thing, but it makes it a little easier of a transition. 
how we think this helps is there's a lot of damage that happens on a cellular level. And when NAD is replenished, your body is actively repairing that damage that happens, which is part of the withdrawal symptoms. The other thing that it's doing is cells talk to each other. NAD helps to repair that cell signaling. Um, and when that's repaired, your body can better kind of function as a whole. So a lot of people like this during either withdrawal from medication or recreational drugs to help with things like insomnia. It does not get rid of all the symptoms, but it can help. Um, another thing I get asked about a lot is the aesthetics of aging. So a lot of people notice when they age, one of the first things they see is their skin texture kind of changing. Um, skin cells specifically are exposed to a lot of toxins, UV radiation, that type of thing, it's constantly under stress, which means it's constantly repairing, it's constantly having to regenerate. And when NAD gets depleted in our system, the same as with our skin, when that happens, cells like keratinocytes, which are the skin cells themselves, and fibroblasts, which are kind of the matrix underneath, um, they just don't function as well, which is where we kind of lose the elastin and the fullness in our skin we get more of that creepy look in our skin. So a lot of people are using NAD to help kind of stop that process. I don't want you to think it rewinds the clock. If you're 80 years old and your skin is a certain way, starting NAD does not rewind the clock to 20 again, but it does stop it so it doesn't get any worse. Um, it's not the only thing at play. There are other actors involved, but it's one thing to help with that process. Um, and a lot of us don't want to look older as we get older. So that's one way it works really, really well. So in summary, basically all of our cells need NAD. The older we get, the higher demand for NAD is and the lower the supply is. Um, so a lot of people will supplement with NAD and we'll go through the different ways of getting NAD, um, but you'll supplement it and it helps your body to repair regenerate and it also helps to give the cellular energy back to the body um, which can help with everything from mental fog to chronic fatigue um, it can help with like stabilizing certain hormone levels um, it can help with insomnia and many other things so that's kind of the overall blanket of NAD it's kind of a snapshot and it's not the full depth just because the full depth would take me hours and most people would get bored with me by then. Um, but that's kind of the overview of NAD and how it works. Now there are precursors to NAD, which basically means there are pieces that come together to make NAD naturally in your body. The three basic ones are nicotinamide, nicotinamide riboside, and nicotinamide mononucleide. Those are all needed to make NAD in your system. So a lot of people will get the over-the-counter supplements of these things to help their body build back NAD. Does it work is the number one question I get. Sometimes yes and sometimes no. It all depends on what your body's ability at that point in time to actually make its own NAD. If it is very efficient in making NAD and it just needed those other things to build up on, then it works beautifully well. If that's not the case and your body is unable to meet the demand at that point, then you won't feel much of a difference by taking those supplements. Now, NAD over-the-counter versus prescription. It's about a concentration thing. So over-the-counter, um, there is very little regulation of what's actually in there. So the amount of NAD is very small, but it still might be smaller than even what's written on the label. Prescription strength is tested, um, it has to maintain a certain threshold, so it's always going to be a little stronger. There are different ways of getting an NAD. Nasal spray works because the mucosa inside the nasal passages, um, it's really good at absorbing different things in a perfect world. But there are situations that change the absorption rate, which makes it a little inconsistent. Um, if at any point you have a cold, have any kind of nasal congestion, anything like that, uh, it's going to affect the absorption because they have a layer of mucus that the medication has to get through to even be absorbed. So it minimizes how much you get in your system. The other consideration is there's genetic uh, differentiations from person to person. Not everyone absorbs well nasally or submucosally. Um, other people do really, really well. So it's one of those things you won't really know until you try it, unless you're someone who's constantly finding allergies or something like that. If that's the case, it's not a good fit at all. Um,
intravenous, so IV uh, NAD, very, very popular right now. It has good parts and bad parts. The good part is it's directly in your system. So what that means is your body instantly absorbs it and uses it. It's right there for your body to use. It usually takes anywhere from an hour and a half to four hours to get these IV infusions. So you have to allow for that amount of time. Um, after the infusion, most people feel the effects fairly quickly, but they are gone by the end of the week. So people who do IVs and only want to stick with IVs, they have to make it part of their normal every week schedule to redo those IVs. What a lot of people do is they'll start off with an IV to boost their system up. And then instead of having to go back every week and get another IV and spend that time there, a lot of people will then switch to either subcutaneous or intramuscular injections. So subcutaneous and intramuscular injections, typically what happens is you get a vial of NAD. It should be from a reputable pharmacy. Um, it should not say for animal use only, not for human consumption. Any of those things are not tested and they're not part of the Pharmacy Association in the United States. Um, but once you get those, you'll have a dose you start off with. So everyone starts at a low dose to make sure you do okay on NAD. Um, most people do NAD injections daily. That's the average. There are people outside the average. I have some people that can do them twice a week and feel great. I have some people that do them every other day and feel great. Most people do them daily. Most people need that because of the half-life of the drug. It just doesn't last in your system that long. Side effects with NAD. NAD has a really, really good side effect profile. Not a lot of side effects come with NAD. The number one side effect I see is flushing. Um, anyone who's taken niacin, which is a, a supplement a lot of people take over the counter, whether for heart health or other reasons, Niacin helps um, to vasodilate, which makes you feel really flushed and hot for a short period of time. This medication does something very, very similar. So majority of people feel a little flushing. It's there and gone very fast, but if you're not expecting it, be a little concerning. Um, the second most common side effect is almost like a heart palpitation or a squeezing in your chest last maybe 20 or 30 seconds and then it's gone. But if you're not expecting it, it can scare you quite a bit. So just so you know, if you ever do NAD, that is a common thing that happens to, I'd say, majority of people. And then it goes away and you shouldn't even feel anything weird at all after that point. 